Good evening, Theo Trade. This is Corey Rosenblum, and you're watching the Theo Nightly video for another active trading session here on the 17th of February in 2022. Let's start with some percent discussion. So the NASDAQ, which is our tech heavy sector, was down 3% in today's session. The XLK, also in the technology sector, was down 3%. Y is a discretionary sector that was down about 2.7%, and our financial sector, XLF, that's down two and a half percent. Those are the ones that stand out in terms of today's weakest markets or weakest ETFs. And the broader markets themselves, or at least the S&P, the Dow, and the Russell, were not off that much, but still were down roughly two percent in today's trading session. We knew this was going to be a volatile week, and it certainly has been. It has not been just one direction in the volatility. The session earlier started Monday, went up quite a few points to the highs, to the middle of the middle, and then back down. So we have the headline news about Russia, Ukraine, of course, the Federal Reserve, and earnings from big companies such as NVIDIA. And already we see we have a lot to talk about just by pinpointing some of those discussions in tonight's video. But let's start with a broader market and then we'll pull down to individual stocks, maybe even some sectors. And take a look at crude, which is down 2%, and the bond market was up about a percent in today's session, as was gold. So lots of things on the move. For the bigger picture, in the S&P futures, we can actually take a look at the SPX for a little broader or outside the contract roles of the futures market and look at the index itself. Key level still is going to be 4,400. And that is right where the market hit, traded down into and then beneath to close today's session roughly at 4300. Prior lows are in play. That has a drop zone beneath the market and 4350. That takes us right back to 4250. And again, this is a short-term picture of the last few months. Taking it back, we still have the uptrend, but in the most recent structure, I think it may be best to call this more of a sideways trading range, or at least a, if we can be so ambitious, a distribution type of pattern. And of course, that's the S&P. The selling pressure for the most part of 2022, and it started later in last year, has come in the NASDAQ. And the NASDAQ is our technology heavy sector. And a quick look at our market cap, just taking a look at the NASDAQ 100, we see how these big market cap stocks, Microsoft, Apple, these were all down on today's session, but some were down more than others. Google and Facebook will throw those together. There's Tesla, which technically is a retail name, as is Amazon. So they actually fall in consumer discretionary. That's over here in the retail sector. And then our focal point, NVIDIA. Just to name a few stocks that are on the downside or the leading edge, if we will, to the downside in the NASDAQ. Beyond that, here is NVIDIA. So this was our expected move up to 290, that's from the earnings, and down to 240. So that is the expected move on the options volatility. And we see that the market after the earnings has taken it down to that 240 expected move level, which simply continues the downtrend of lower lows, lower highs in motion, setting up yet another sell swing for those shares. And in a downtrend, it's a little easier for many traders to focus on the short side or the downtrending opportunities in those downtrending channels. So outside of that, while we're on the subject, Tesla in, it is such a volatile stock. But if we remember, Tesla peaked above 1200 around November of 2021. And since then has had a very wide trading range. We'll make that roughly speaking 850 and 1200 makes the midpoint roughly 1050. We're pushing down the lows of that downtrend, or again, may I be a little ambitious, a distribution type of a pattern. And that makes more sense if you look at it from a broader perspective. The greater the rise, usually, or at least the more impulse of the rise, the faster the market falls. And the markets can actually crash or impulse of the upside and key technology stocks do have greater beta and greater volatility so they can do these type of moves, but they are high flyers and things that fly high 
tend to come back. Tesla is down off that 1200 level and has a big impact on the broader XLY, which is not that much different looking, at least in the big picture, than Tesla. XLK, remember, is our broader technology sector. And that would include names like Apple, which is similar, and Microsoft, just to name a few. That's the plays off in that sector. Financials, just to qu take a quick look that are outside of the technology. We see those pushed up to the highs, XLF at least 41.5, and that is coming down. So keeping this theme in mind about broader trading ranges, midpoints, and all the discussion there, normal distributions and bell curves for the financial sector, that just pulled back to the middle. And that's showing a little bit of relative strength. Today's strongest sector was staples, but that makes sense when the market is this weak. In terms of sector movement, the top three, which are financials, technology, and discretionary, tend to be bullish, or you might hear the term risk on. The middle, which are industrials, materials, and energy, tend to be a little mid-cycles. We don't refer to them that much as risk on or risk off, but the downside are the staples, healthcare, and utilities. You might see these as bearish, or you may hear the term risk off. And that's playing in today's, today's session where the weakest of the bunch were the bullish or risk on sectors and the strongest, even some of them green, were the staples and utilities. What does this mean? This is c exactly what you would expect to see with a big down day where the weakest sectors were the leadership on the upside or bullish or risk on and the strongest were risk off. Just keeping this quick and keeping it to themes. Back inside, we have PayPal, and we see this stock continue to make list of weak stocks getting weaker. This is our scan that I show many times in the videos, and I keep on my swing charts and swing account as well to see which stocks are leading us on the downside. And the thought process is that which is weak tends to get weaker. And if it's a different way to say that, if it's downtrending, it tends to continue downtrending. If it's making new lows, it continues or has a better chance to continue making new lows. And by the opposite thought process, we don't have as many names because the market is not quite making highs as it was later in 2021, but the same logic into Philip Morris, Devon Energy, and a few others. Those are making new 52-week highs, but there are only six of them. In terms of stocks making new 52-week lows, we are seeing a broad broadening or expansion in these names. And that is not good for the broader market. It's something to continue watching. 21 of the stocks in the S&P 500 made new 52-week lows. Topping the list isn't actually PayPal when looked at by market cap. It actually is Facebook. So let's go down that list quickly. Stocks making new 52-week lows are Facebook, and that trend reversed later part of 2021. Again, the NASDAQ, similar. And then CRM, which is salesforce.com, has been downtrending ever since its peak in later 2021. Honeywell, which caught a downside play. There's PayPal. And PayPal is a stock that continues to play to the downside. And that's the thought process for what we look at when we're seeing stocks or indices or ETFs make new lows. The logic is not, at least from my opinion, when it makes a new low, it tends to come back up. It makes a new low, it tends to come back up. It makes a new low, it tends to come back up. It makes a new low, it tends to come back up. That's not how I view that. When a stock makes persistent new lows in a downtrend, it actually has a better shot to keep making lower lows in the downtrend. And an example outside the S&P with some of the annotated lines I have on the chart and some other stocks that are playing is Zoom. And this stock, again, continued to make lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, lower lows, and now we have another new 52-week low in Zoom technologies. And that's just on the weekly chart to see how that plays out on the bigger picture. I would recommend taking a look at some of the leading market cap names and seeing how they are playing. I would recommend looking at the weekly chart and the daily charts, just to name a few, NVIDIA, and seeing how far that pullback is. Tesla, of course, 
the broad picture is remarkably strong, but things that go up, again, have greater risk of pulling back. So things that tend to go straight up don't tend to wiggle down gently, they tend to fall. And that's what's happened to Tesla, not only recently, and that's where we are at the moment, but it happened not too long ago in 2021. And comparatively speaking, it may not look like it, but that similar rise led to a similar rug pull. It's the risk in these stocks. On the way down, there's PayPal, of course, other stocks in play. Google has traded down off the highs. There is, again, Facebook, which is on the weekly chart, very, very well pulled back to this 200 level where we've seen the market last time in 2020. And that's getting back to where it was right before the pandemic. All that being said, it is worth looking at the broader picture. It is worth looking at crude oil, which is again, have, has a better shot of pulling back. Gold, which is catching a bid finally after many, many months of being sideways in a consolidation. And we can take a look at bonds or TNTLT to see the bond market. TLT pricing is back to where it was. Again, as we saw the last week's video, last Tuesday's video, back to where the pandemic lows were. As always, be careful and say if there is headline risk, there is stock specific risk and sector risk all over. But where there's risk, there is opportunity. Please be careful and safe. This is Corey Rosalind with tonight's video update for February 17th, 2022.